Horseshoe crabs and spiders. Horseshoe crabs were misidentified as crabs hundreds of years ago. Granted, they spend most of their time crawling over the seafloor and have a crab-like shell roughly resembling a horseshoe. However, they are grouped with arachnids. Horseshoe crabs date back 500 million years as a species. These prehistoric survivors, who perhaps never evolved to flourish on land like the rest of their cousins, use their long tails as a tool to dig for food or to right themselves when upside down. Even more remarkably, the horseshoe crab has 10 eyes on its back and sides, can replace lost body parts, and has blue blood. The blood is medically valuable and is used to detect bacteria for cancer research and diagnosing leukemia as well as vitamin B12 deficiency. Sadly, a great number of horseshoe crabs are caught for their blood and also by the bait industry. Meerkats and civet cats. They may have similar names and superb feline-like agility, but neither meerkats nor civet cats are remotely related to cats. These African carnivores are related to mongooses and weasels, noted for their long, elastic bodies. Meerkat and civet mothers both give birth in underground dens, but their commonalities end there. Meerkats believe that it takes a village to raise a pup, but civets are single mothers who only group together with others during mating season. Civet babies are born rough and ready for the world, fully furred and able to move around. Meerkats are born naked and without their senses. Meerkats, who are noted for scanning their environment while standing on their hind feet, as well as a degree of immunity to scorpion venom, are smaller and dull-colored. The nocturnal civet grows more than three times a meerkat's length at about 1.4 meters and is a beautifully patterned animal with a bandit face mask and a jaguar-like pelt, which unfortunately makes it a regular hunting target. Meerkats can live up to 13 years, and civets can live up to 20. Ants and bees. If bees were to attend some kind of taxonomic family reunion, they wouldn't be hanging out with wasps, but rather ants. The family line was rearranged when scientists sequenced the insect's genetic material to answer an old question about how they evolved as a group. This group, called the Achilleate Hymenoptera clade, holds bees, ants, and stinging wasps. The results refuted the belief that ants were more closely related to certain wasps and only a far-off cousin to bees. The reverse turned out to be true, with the exception of digger wasps and mud daubers. This new family tree now allows insect-loving scientists to study with more accuracy how reproduction, feeding, and social behavior have evolved within this stinging group, as well as their differences as separate species. The discovery also clarified a fossil that had been hard to place and, as it turned out, was wrongly classified. The Cretaceous Cararidris bipetiolata was thought to be the world's most ancient fossilized ant, but with a new and better understanding of these insects' family placement, it was reassigned as a type of ancestral wasp. Komodo dragons, and Allosaurus. Nothing matches the cool factor when it comes to the largest lizard currently scaring the planet. The Komodo dragon looks intimidating, has toxic venom, and hunts prey bigger than itself. Now, raise this 3-meter reptile on its hind legs, give it horns, make it dinosaur-sized, and say hello to its cousin, the Allosaurus. One shared family trait is rather startling. These two super predators have surprisingly weak jaws for their size. The Komodo's chomping power falls in the range of the domestic house cat, and the ferocious Allosaurus most likely had to hack and strip meat out of its living victims, rather than deliver crushing bites. However, dainty jaws weren't a disadvantage during hunting, since evolution endowed them with specialized skulls, strong neck muscles, and cutthroat teeth. In short, they became lethal slashers. Causing prey to die from large wounds and blood loss is called inertia eating, and the Komodo also uses this tactic, along with poisoning its prey during bites. The Komodo, whom researchers recently discovered originated in Australia as opposed to the Indonesian island of Komodo, even has a mouth with snake-like flexibility, allowing it to cause traumatic damage to a bigger area. Unfortunately for the extreme pet owner, neither is up for regular adoption. The dangers of keeping a Komodo ensure that dogs won't be replaced anytime soon. Dingoes and Indian Wolves the bond between dingoes and wolves might not come as a jaw-dropping surprise. They're dogs after all, right? Wrong. A groundbreaking and long overdue study finally buried the belief that the dingo is a product of feral domestic dogs. Dingoes wore the label of being Australia's own native dog for over two centuries, but it might be more correct to call them Australian wolves. The Sydney study discovered that dingoes showed no conclusive signs of being descended from dogs, were not a subspecies, and were completely apart from dogs. Dingoes were never dogs, period. They are, however, related to the one of the smallest wolf species on the planet, the reddish, one-meter-long Indian wolf. Spending up to 5,000 years in isolation genetically created the dingo as a separate and true canid species. With wolves, they share the pack dynamics of having pups once a year, which are raised by the whole family group, as well as territorial howling. 
But it's interesting to note that the Indian wolf almost never howls, even though it is capable, and researchers still don't understand why. Gibble carp and koi fish. Koi fish are iconic. They stand for grace, beauty, and elitism. These brightly colored fish have a family connection to the wild gibel carp. The gibel is a plain, humpbacked fish with a genetic surprise. It's what the goldfish would look like without human interference. Every goldfish today, despite their varied looks, are descended from the wild gibel carp, and interbreeding will result in fertile fry since they are genetically identical. Today's goldfish are nothing more than modified gibel carp. They remain the same species, and the koi is a relative. Their distant link, both being members of the family Saprinidae, is no barrier for romance either. Goldfish and koi can interbred, but like horses and donkeys, the offspring produced will be sterile. Such offspring are also dull compared to their colorful parents and lack the mouth whiskers of true koi, but will be tougher than both species and able to live in worse water conditions. Researchers have also recently proven that the three-second memory attributed to goldfish is a joke. They have a memory of at least three months and can recognize different colors and noises. Able to live for a couple of decades, they are also smart enough to learn simple tricks. Humans and kangaroos. A diminutive hopper named Matilda, a Tamar wallaby, became the first kangaroo to have her genetic code mapped. The Australian researchers were in for a shock when they compared her code with a human's. They had expected the comparison to be a complete mismatch, but it turned out that the genomes of the two species were more than just similar. Apart from a couple of differences, the genes were identical, and many of them were arranged in the same order. Both species hold large pieces of genetic information about the other. It made more sense when the researchers also discovered that people and these bouncy marsupials had a common ancestor that lived at least 150 million years ago. Mice separated from humans only 70 million years ago. But scientists feel that kangaroos can provide more answers about human evolution when it comes to why some DNA remained the same for eons while other DNA changed. By comparing different genomes from species, unknown genes can be identified, and Matilda revealed 14 new genes never before seen in kangaroos, which might possibly also be present in humans, waiting to reveal more about ourselves. Jellyfish and coral. One swims like a fish and the other grows like a plant, but in truth, both are actually animals. Jellyfish and coral belong to the family group called Cynidarians, bell or tube-shaped animals that can deliver a burning sting with their tentacles. Despite this, they certainly don't appear to be related. Jellyfish sting swimmers and pulse themselves through the water, while corals appear to be twig-like bonsais that do nothing. It comes down to body build, however. Cynidarians are sac-like creatures with a central opening around which the tentacles grow. This is more obvious with jellyfish. The coral frames often found in novelty stores are not the animal itself, but a limestone coating built by them for protection and anchoring to a reef. The tiny individual corals are simplistic in design. They are cup-shaped sacs and have one opening that doubles as a means of both eating and excretion. They suck calcium carbonate from the ocean to build the branches that most people mistakenly see as coral. Thousands of minute coral animals stay around their limestone tree, using their tentacles to search for food. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.